Hey guys, and welcome back to more English with Dry. Today, the first of a new series called Reading with Dry. I'm going to take you through some of my absolute favorite books. They are ones that I have chosen specifically that I consider to be classics of the literary canon, but not the boring old stuff, the Dickens and, and the Brontes, etc., although those are good too. These are 20th century novels that I think that anyone who's interested in studying literature at a high level or who simply enjoys reading and finding out about the wider world should really get their hands on and have a look at. I'm going to take you through my top five. What I would like to say quickly is that the descriptions of the plot summaries are not my own. They are from websites. I've put a bibliography at the end, so please check them out if you want to learn more. And also, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. So book number one, I'm going to read you briefly the first lines of each of these books. I am an invisible man. No, I'm not a spook like those who haunted Edgar Allan Poe, nor am I one of your Hollywood movie ectoplasms. I'm a man of substance, flesh and bone, fibre and liquids, and I might even be said to possess a mind. I'm invisible, understand, simply because people refuse to see me. These are the immortal first lines from Ralph Ellison's 1952 novel, The Invisible Man. It's a story told from the point of view of a young black man from the South in America who does not fully understand racism in the world. Filled with hope for his future, he goes to college but gets expelled for showing one of the white benefactors the real and seamy side of black existence. He moves to Harlem, which is in New York, and becomes a speaker for the Communist Party. Known as the Brotherhood, as he works for the organization, he encounters many people in situations that slowly force him to face the truth about racism and his own lack of identity. As racial tensions in Harlem continue to build, he gets caught up in a riot that drives him to a manhole. In the darkness and solitude of the manhole, he begins to understand himself, his invisibility, and his identity. Now, Ralph Ellison, the author, was the first African American to win the American National Book Award. He won it in the year 1953 and beat both Ernest Hemingway and John Steinbeck, who were two of the most famous and respected white authors uh, in America at that time and remain so in American history. It shot Ellison to international fame and he was instantly in the limelight, being offered jobs and honorary degrees from several of the biggest universities in the world. He suffered what he called himself a little bit of a writer's block and was never able to quite write a, a book that he considered to be up to the standard of The Invisible Man ever again. However, this didn't stop him lecturing and teaching at some of the most prestigious universities across America, such as Yale, until he eventually died. The reason you should read this book is that all at once it's an adventure, a satire, a coming-of-age story, and a tragedy. Issues covered in the novel are mainly racial inequality in employment, education, fair housing, and police brutality. And of course, these are all just as relevant in America in, the, in this day and age as they were when they were written. Furthermore, it's a novel that is credited with introducing a new type of black protagonist to literature. The invisible man who narrates the story is both intelligent and educated, as well as being interested in the world around him, which widely differed from a number of the stereotypical portrayals of African Americans in other works from the early 20th century. Definitely the absolute number one that I suggest that you take a look at. Okay, we're moving on to number two. These are the first lines from Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar. It was a queer, sultry summer, the summer they electrocuted the Rosenbergs, and I didn't know what I was doing in New York. The Bell Jar in 1963 was a damning critique of the 50s social politics of America. Plath herself made clear connections between the main protagonist's dawning awareness of the limited female roles available to her and the increasing sense of isolation and paranoia. The contradictory expectations imposed upon women in relation to sexuality, motherhood, and intellectual achievement are linked to Esther's sense of herself as fragmented. Her eventual recovery relies on her ability to dismiss the dominant versions of femininity that populate the novel. Plath herself is an extremely famous and unfortunately somewhat tragic figure. She was more commonly known as a poet and only wrote one novel, which was The Bell Jar, it was posthumously awarded the Pulitzer Prize. Plath won a Fulbright scholarship in her youth to Cambridge University as a result of works that she had published from a young age. An extremely talented writer, she struggled with depression following the breakdown of her marriage. 
As such, mental illness is a major theme in the semi-autograph autobiographical bell jar. Placidly took her own life at the age of 31. You should read this book because it's both haunting and tragic, and it's considered often to be one of the most important American novels of the 20th century. The way in which Plath exposes injustices of expected gender roles and psychiatric care in the mid-century is hugely significant both historically and culturally. She was a pioneer in the confessional poetry style, and a striking level of openness and honesty can be found in all of her writing. The closeness that this narrative bears to Plath's own life makes the novel uniquely authentic. Number three, I was 37 then, strapped in my seat as the huge 747 plunged through dense cloud cover on approach to Hamburg airport. This is the first line of Haruki Murakami's Norwegian Wood, which was written in 1987. The novel tells the story of Toru Watanabe, a young man who is damaged by the suicide of his high school friend Kazuki. Toru falls in love with Kazuki's tortured girlfriend, Naoko, who is isolated in her own mind. When she goes into a mental hospital, he promises to wait for her. Meanwhile, he falls in love with Midori, an open and uninhibited girl who represents life. Toru is filled with guilt when Naoku kills herself, but ultimately he calls out to Midori. Murakami's novel is set largely in his native Japan and specifically Tokyo, and many of his his works have been bestsellers in Japan and also around the world. His writing has been translated into over 50 languages. Due to his popular success, he became something of a celebrity in his homeland, and at the height of his fame, he was often crowded by fans in the same way a film or music star might be. You should read this book because it is both a critical masterpiece as well as being highly readable and an enjoyable piece of fiction. It's a love story uh, and one that contains references to both popular as well as high culture, which is something very few other novels in the post-1960s successfully managed to achieve. He is one of the most talented writers at creating captivating and believable characters. The novel is intense and delicate and would be fascinating for anyone interested in Japanese or Southeast Asian culture in general. Number four, we slept in what had once been the gymnasium. Now, anyone who is a fan of TV will know of The Handmaid's Tale. The novel itself was written in 1985 by Margaret Atwood and takes place in the 1990s in the fictional Republic of Gilead. Gilead used to be the United States before the Gileadians took over. They are a Christian fundamentalist regime. Their society shows what family values might look like if they were enforced. Women stay at home, a woman's place, gardening and having babies. If women cannot or refuse to do this, they are labelled unwoman and executed or sent to concentration camps called the colonies. Now, Margaret Atwood is quite simply one of the most famous authors in the world. She has had 18 novels and 22 collections of poetry published and has received over 100 literary awards and prizes. Some of the major themes in her writing include gender, identity, religion and myth, animal rights and climate change. The Handmaid's Tale is on reading lists and course syllabuses around the world, and that includes the AQA A-level English literature. The dystopia depicted in the novel is one of the most famous and enduring patriarchies in literature. According to Atwood, every aspect of the society of Gilead is drawn from something that either exists or has existed in the real world. It has been adapted into a film, an opera, and most recently an award-winning television series. Most interestingly, many critics have drawn parallels between the novel and the direction American society has been heading in since the election of Donald Trump in 2016. Finally, book five, my personal favourite, I have to admit. In my younger, more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since. Whenever you feel like criticising anyone, he told me, just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the advantages that you've had. These are the first lines of The Immortal Great Gatsby from F. Scott Fitzgerald in 1925. It's set during the Roaring Twenties in 1922 and tells the story of one man's pursuit of the American dream. The narrator, Nick Carraway, is an upper-class American man who moves from the West to New York to try his luck as a bond trader. He meets an eccentric, exceptionally wealthy neighbour named Jay Gatsby and becomes embroiled in Gatsby's plans to rekindle a lost love with a woman named Daisy Buchanan, who happens to be Nick's cousin. Fitzgerald wrote extensively about the Jazz Age, which was a term that he coined to describe the 20s in America. It was one of the most prosperous and artistically important periods in the country's history. Specifically, it directly preceded the Great Depression and a total change in the country's fortunes. 
He is commonly described by some of the most famous authors of the 20th century as being their inspiration for starting to write, and Fitzgerald is widely regarded as one of the greatest American authors. You should read this book because it is one of the most elegantly written novels in the English language. Anyone who is serious about studying literature will have to read this novella at some point. Gatsby is one of the best novels on the subject also of the American dream, and just how elusive it is. It explores regret in more detail than any other piece of literature that I've ever encountered, and it is known throughout the world, often being considered as one of the great American novels. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hopefully will see you next time. Goodbye.